get to learn how the West was fun. This is probably one of their better films. Honestly, for what that's worth. <laughs> uh, honestly, this is the best one that we've watched. Uh -huh. um, it might be the best one I've watched too, actually. Mm. I've seen some of their other ones, granted it's been a long time. Even but, though they uh, couldn't fake a realistic looking smile for the cover. <laughs> Holy shit, they look dead inside. <laughs> it's so I sad. I doing this. The, the Olsen twins, their great godmother owns a ranch, and she has a son, Bart Gafuli, who wants to build Gafuli land <laughs> on this ranch. Um, so he's been hiding things like uh, letters from people who want to go to the ranch for years and years, so that basically the ranch is run down and he can buy it for really cheap, and then he can build whatever he wants to there. The great godmother decides to invite the, the twins and their father and their mother, who she does not know is dead, um, to the ranch before it gets shut down, and that's when she finds out that uh, the mother passed away, uh, is only sad for two seconds, uh -huh. and they are going to spend some time at the ranch before they find out something's afoot, and they're going to try and save it. Oh, I used to love to go to Western movies when I was a kid. <laughs> we played cowboys and uh, cowboys and Germans. These pictures are a bit of a lie. This doesn't happen in the movie. No. They don't tie up Martin Mull. But a lot of other hilarious things happen with him. <laughs> he is one of the main reasons why this is one of their best movies, though. <laughs> Martin Mull as the villain, Bart Gafuli, mm -hmm. uh, makes But it's this really movie. Gene Parmesan! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Gene! It's just some idiot with balloons. Oh, is it? He's hilarious in this. He makes this movie. Um, granted, I do think Mary Kate and Ashley are not bad in this movie. I think they they didn't really There's write them very bratty. Where they're dead. There's a little bit, but I feel like um, as far as crafting a watchable movie like mm -hmm. that holds up, this is probably the one that is the best. Mm -hmm. um, even though it is quite ridiculous at parts. Uh -huh. Yeah, they are little brats in this. Like every one of their movies, I don't think they knew how to write a movie with these two where no. they weren't little brats. <laughs> every every Mary Kate Ashley movie is they ruin their parents' lives. Usually they're single parents, and that is the case again in this yeah. one with their single father. Their mother is dead! D-E-D, -D, dead. <laughs> D-E-E-D. Their mom is dead of car cancerritis. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't remember if they say what happened. No, I don't think so. Where's your mom? I, I wrote you when it happened, and Sarah died three years ago. Oh no! The woman who owns the ranch in this is her great godmother, and apparently she did have to watch her for a while, so she lived with this woman for quite a while, I guess. Yeah, she grew up there. Probably. Yeah, so apparently she was kind of like her mother. I guess the dead mom's mom also died, and she had to live <laughs> with her godmother. It's a long string of yeah. godmothers in this family. <laughs> So, this woman who was like this older lady's daughter died, and she never heard about it. No, because apparently they don't have a phone, and they never questioned when they sent this letter that maybe it could have gotten lost in the mail, which is a possibility. They never heard from them and had the funeral and just yeah, yeah. accepted this. They don't have a phone, but they have a fax machine. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, and I know Martin Mull's character is an asshole in this, but he hears, this is his first time hearing about this too, I assume, that this He probably woman, read the letter. Maybe? He just didn't give it to her. Well, that one wasn't about, like, he was hiding letters from people then that wanted to come and stay at the ranch. Mm -hmm. I assume if he saw that one, he... I don't know, other than just being evil, I mean, there's no reason to hide that one, but, but I guess maybe, because, like, he hears this woman who was like a sister to him, I guess, for a lot of years is dead. First response out of him was like, oh, yeah, well, male's really unreliable in these rural areas. <laughs> what? You obviously never got my letter. Well, you know, the mail these days, especially rural, it's very unreliable. Like, I don't know why they involved the dead mom really in the plot at all when they're just going to glance over it like that. 
they glance over a lot of kind of important things in this plot. Uh-huh. Uh, they glance over the dead mom, when really they could have just invited the dad over and been like, that was her son, mm-hmm. or God's son, or whatever. You'll see her at dinner, and her son Bart. We didn't know about him. Many don't. It's kind of confusing to be like, what is their relation? So she's their great godmother. What does that make him like? They're like god uncle or cousin or yeah, <laughs> whatever this makes <laughs> makes him. <Yeah>, nothing. <laughs> nothing. He is nothing to them. <laughs> yeah, really, a great godmother isn't really a thing either. <laughs> like, you don't well, really hear. Like, unless, I guess, maybe in this case, like, she did actually raise the mom, but in that case, he's a real big asshole for, like, not making sure and not thinking it odd when she never showed up at the funeral for this woman who was practically her daughter. Yeah, like, I I think they were trying to make it so that uh, it would be plausible that she might not have heard or whatever. I know, or whatever, but it, it's but ridiculous. It's needlessly distancing when you could have just cut that part out entirely because yeah. they could have just said like he had a wife who died but this is his grandmother who's inviting them to the, the ranch mm-hmm. and then you could still have the plot about him falling in love with the ranch hand mm-hmm. and it would have made just as much sense. Like this is just more questions that they don't answer. Yeah. This is probably the most involved you get in any of these dead parents of one of the Olsen twins in one of these movies, too, because a lot of the time they don't bring it up that much. It's like, oh, they single parent. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess they do have the plot about um, when the mother was growing up there, she made a treasure map mm-hmm. for this treasure that she found. And uh, eventually this leads into the plot, like, in the 11th hour. Uh-huh. Daddy and I still plan one day to find the lost gold mine. But nearly losing the ranch had made me think about why it's so special. The other thing that they glance over that's kind of important, but then not, is that um, they're living in the city, and the father works for this asshole. She did not install the approved deadbolt locks. That invalidates her insurance policy. The woman is blind. She lost her dog. That's her problem. He works for evil insurance company who's like, ha, 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 you're trying to give the insurance claim from this woman who's blind and got robbed? She didn't have the proper dead birds on her door. <laughs> no, deny, deny. I'm not going to give that gypsy lady her loan. <laughs> <laughs> That's her problem. So he's got to get some vacation time to go to this ranch, and he doesn't think he's going to get it. So the twins take it upon themselves to call his work to ask for vacation time on his behalf, which gets him fired. But they cover this up and just play part of the message on the machine, saying that he can take the vacation. And he doesn't question why this really out-of-character statement comes from the boss, or why they immediately turn off the recording before Mm -hmm. it finishes. When he finds out that he was fired, then they covered this up because evil Martin Mole is trying to take out these stupid little girls. Um, it's just glanced over very quickly. Like, he's like, oh no, how could you do this? They're trying to get a loan from the bank, and they're like, oh no, he's unemployed. But then uh, the godmother's like, well, you can be my manager. Problem solved. This takes two seconds. Mm -hmm. And then the little shits have no consequences. (laughs) Yeah. People know how to amuse themselves long before there was TV. You're kidding. You know what they did? Watch videos. No, they talk to each other. This could be a long vacation. Like little brats. Like they cover it up. They know they're being little shits about it. Like, yeah. oh man, dad's gonna have a bad time later. <laughs> well, we gotta get to the yeah, ranch. But yeah, we wanna go on our vacation to a ranch, so yeah. screw dad. And then immediately they're like, oh, there's no TV at this ranch. <laughs> they probably killed their mom too with some stupid <laughs> prank. They're like, oh well, that'll come back later, maybe. They're gonna kill their sister Lizzie Olson for her cameo. <laughs> You'll never be as famous as us. Do you know how to get to 7th Street? It's right over there, silly! This whole plot with Gafooli Land, of course he's gonna name it after himself, Mm -hmm. Gafooli Land. He's ridiculous. He's got a little model of Gafooli Land in his, like, (laughs) underlayer bunker. (laughs) With ominous red lights. Yeah. And he plays the evil sticks, uh, evil laugh sound over it. (laughs) Yes! That is amazing. It's the exact same laugh they used in Evil Stick. <laughs> Why do we have that? Or like a little skeleton. Why does he have these evil things? Yeah, like what's a skeleton have to do with your like ranch 
fairground thing <laughs> theme park you want to do. And then when, when he realizes that the little girls are hiding in his room, he sees a foot and then grabs a hammer as if he's going to break her foot or murder them with a hammer. Amazing. I love, like, more than once in this movie, he is willing to murder little girls mm -hmm. for his stupid Gafuli land. <laughs> they need to die. <laughs> he is probably right, though. I bet Gafuli land's gonna make, would have made more money than the stupid ranch. It's unrealistic that these little girls like the outdoors more than they would like yeah. the theme park. Yeah, there's some weird lines come out of them, like, when they get to the ranch, you're like, what's that? Fresh air. What a concept. <laughs> what's that? Smell. I think it's fresh air. What a concept! <laughs> Good one, Mary Kate. When the little girls leave the room, he hides with the hammer, mm -hmm. as if he's gonna ambush yes. them with the Stand hammer. in a red light, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so Going good. to kill them. <laughs> At one oh. point, he chases them down and then falls in the mud face first. Mm -hmm. It's clearly not him. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! His massive letter burning in the <laughs> a conspicuous yeah. fire that no one suspects. Like, yeah. why was he holding on to those for that long? Yeah, he should have been getting rid of them as they came rather than waiting for this mass burning. Yeah, at least three years he was holding on to these, and he's like, ah, today's the day. Yeah. Eventually, when this all comes out, they, they take the model from him because, of course, he's in a hot tub with the model, mm -hmm. playing with it, because he somehow set it up to float. They steal it and show it to the the uh, great godmother after, of course, she has signed over the papers. Yeah. And so he's like, he, 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 now my plan's out and I can just be evil. Um, You're going to the old folks' home. I thought I knew you. You know Diddley. You're going to the old folks' home, Mom. And this horse is going to the glue factory. <laughs> he has no reason for the horse either. It's just a horse someone likes. He's like, that horse you like is going to the glue factory. <laughs> Did that even belong to him at that point? It was just the ranch. Did the, the horses get signed over and shit too? I guess. Which horses belong to the show lady? Did they, like, I, I think One Hercules maybe was hers. Yeah, Hercules. Yeah. Hercules and Lightning. Lightning. There's the magic horse, though, that led them to their mother's camp, which is kind of a teepee-ish thing. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, there's also this Native American guy who works at the ranch who's... I don't know. He doesn't really do much magical, except he teleports away from this camp once, which is the only real thing, and they kind of keep playing like this like stings when he shows up or near the beginning like he's mystical in some way i'm glad you got here in time <gasps> the time where'd he go why he doesn't have to be <laughs> mystical just because he's native american <laughs> if you've seen any western type movie in the 90s you know exactly what this character is the token mystical for no reason Native American. Yeah. I love it too because it doesn't play much into the plot. They have this part where he talks to them about finding like their inner power or whatever and then they play some kind of music while they're sleeping, but it doesn't really relate to anything. That was so weird. It seemed like there's a cut dream there too. Yeah. Because it's think... just like you see them like I guess other than commercial break but it's really awkward when the movie just plays because it's like da -da -da. Cut to the next day. You have a weird dream? Yeah, I did. We think we have powers. Okay. Yeah, it was a little strange. <laughs> and I was like mixing up my stupid 90s magical Native American movies because I swore more happened than that, but I think I was probably thinking of like Little Bigfoot or something, <laughs> which also had magical Native Americans because of course it did. Yeah, they have prophetic dreams right at the beginning of this yeah, movie too. Yeah, they haven't even met him. Yeah, they have a showdown with them in like an Old West setting. What would you do with the land? Start a casino. You were pointing this out. The Native American guy, despite knowing a lot about horses and nature and shit and everything around the ranch, um, you never see him ride a horse. Yeah. Like, he's leading them, but he's always on a bike. Yeah, he's teaching them to ride horses <laughs> while on a bike. And so it just seems like the guy they hired did not know how to ride horses, so they just, they're like, well, He's the only Native American guy we yeah. know, so I guess just put him on a bike, whatever. Yeah, he can have a bike. <laughs> really funny in the few spots. Just cut me down! Oh, okay. 
You are a moron. Uh, Bart teams up with the cook, mm -hmm. Cookie, Cookie, the cook, who has betrayed them. But yet they still employ, even after they know that he's betrayed them. Because he's just like, ah, Cookie, put up the flag. Gafuli land. But then when they decide to team up and um, and fix up the ranch, and they're like, look, we stole the deed, and we're not going to acknowledge that, that we signed this. We're going to impress these investors and save the ranch. Um, he decides to team up with Cookie, who is still working for them. And they're somehow surprised that all of these, like, um, sabotages happen that involve Cookie. Yeah. Who do you think is involved? The guy who was teamed up with the villain? No, they're really stupid about this, because, like, after, um, fairy godmother, or whatever she is, it's kicks so her son off the ranch, tells him... Bitch. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, uh, you're, you obviously evil man, I now know you're obviously evil, okay, get off my ranch. We hid the deed I signed over to you, so it's mine again. He's like, oh, darn. But then he keeps sabotaging them, and they're just kind of like, oh, that guy keeps sabotaging us, like... Call the police then? Like, <laughs> nope. Like, why are you letting him keep doing these things while he sits in the bushes? <laughs> You've been messing with the wrong people, Gafui! Oh, yeah? Well, what are you gonna do about it, small fry? You're nothing but a bunch of losers. So they, they go to this investor who has teamed up with Bart to invest in this um, Gafuli land. And they're like, if we can show you that this ranch is a better investment than Gafuli land, will you break your deal with him because we got the deed? Well, don't skip about how they get there. They ride horses to the city. They ride horses <laughs> to the city. And of course this works out for them completely and they don't die. And then they meet their future, another pair of twins. <laughs> and after that silliness, they jump a coffee tree cart as it's going by without the guy pushing it noticing into the board meeting room. Here's my question. Did uh, Maybe I was just zoning out at that point, but like, did anyone at the ranch question that the girls were gone? No. And wonder where they were? Because this couldn't have been a short trip. I'm sure their dads counted it as a blessing that they disappeared. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> Hopefully they're dead in the woods. <laughs> And I Thank can, you, magical Native Americans. Can, I with pray to you. My new love interest, without them being judgmental about. It. I will make some new twins, <laughs> better twins. I can rebuild them. I have the technology. My God, you're not scared of me. That's refreshing. Old Cyril Sneer McDuck is all like, Well, I actually have this kid side to me, so I guess I'll listen to these two little brats and check this ranch out. They've established that this is a character that would sell his grandmother for one dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, which they say more than once in this, but and yet, he is so reasonable about this. Like, more than reasonable. Like, he's like, all right, little girls who have come here unsupervised on horses and broken into this meeting, I'll go with your deal, as if, like, if there's any sort of legalness to this. No. Like, well, he just, he's just so uh, amused by their audaciousness to come in and do this. And, and also oh, they okay. offered him a free trip to this ranch, as mm. if, like, the ranch is going to hold to these little girl's promises mm -hmm. of getting this free trip at this ranch that apparently he has no faith in anyway. Mm -hmm. And he goes there with all of his business associates from business land uh, in his awesome lightning shirt. Yeah. And they all have like cowboy costumes already when they get off the, the bus or wherever they come from. Yeah, they've dressed up for this. They dressed up for this. And they're going to show him a good time at the ranch. But of course, everything is sabotaged and they don't question all of these sabotages. That no. must just be a bad operation. Yeah, they even say like, oh, it's that bad son doing it, which you now he knows about since he's going to make the deal yeah. with them. So he's like, no excuses. Oh, yeah. You guys can't put all the blame on him. Like, can, especially when it's stupid things like, here, ride some wild stallions. <laughs> Okay, they, they, the horse 
horses are lost at one point because Bart let them out. And then they're like, stall while we go look for them. As if they can't just say, oh no, the horses got out, we need to go get them because Bart fucked this up or whatever. They, they distract them with a lesson and they start getting bored. And as they start to leave, the barn doors open and the trainer lady is there with some horses with saddles. And they're like, ah, here's the horses, pick whichever one you want. But then they start telling the dad, no, don't do this, because these are actual, actually wild Mustangs. Which makes me wonder, like, did they put the saddles on the Mustangs? Yeah. Because you can't do that with unbroken horses. No, they're not going to just sit there and let you saddle them up and be all good until you yeah. get on their back and go, oh yeah, I'm wild. Yeah, and then when they get on them, they start flicking them off, and those poor stunt doubles, there's some pretty bad falls there. This would get people injured or killed. You would get a lawsuit. But they just brush this over like, ah, ha, ha, funny moment. Anyway, next scene. Some more slapstick. <laughs> Stupid Martin Bull. They're like, oh, where did these wild Mustangs come from? Oh, Bart. And meanwhile, he's in the bushes again. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Bart. <laughs> Damn you, Bart Samson. Come along, Bart. Are you talking to me? No, my son is also named Bart. A million sabotages later. What, what happens? They, um... They find how the West was fun. They find how the West was fun. <laughs> After all the sabotages, they go, oh yeah, here's the treasure map, because yeah, they're right. about to be like, fuck this noise, we're yeah. going home. After like, the girls sing a song, they're like, oh, we're out. Yeah. There's nothing better than singing a song. We don't want any musical numbers well, here. Yeah, you don't have to sell us your crappy songs. Like, the last bit of description on the back of this is just trying to sell you other Olsen twins crap. Like, man. Which are ones that we've already watched anyway. Uh, except It Takes Two, which you can expect on a future movie night, so I'm sure, <laughs> as we burn our way through these. <laughs> <laughs> these masterpieces. So yeah, they decide they're gonna go look for this treasure, and Greedy McGreederson's like, I'm gonna go get a treasure. Which, by the way, he's less greedy than Bart, because Bart mm. steals a pen at one point. Yeah. He's like, ooh, penny. A penny <laughs> earned. <laughs> He's so greedy, he steals a penny. Even though there's a bunch of other change there, but he just steals a penny. Mm -hmm. A penny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then goes to the bushes and laughs. <laughs> By the way, I killed your mother. <laughs> My greatest prank. <laughs> I love that he's always been so evil that, like, the old diary entries from their mother talks about all these evil things that he did as a child. <laughs> Yesterday, I saw Bart in the woods setting a fire to some bushes. He got lost in the smoke, but I got him out. Uh, yeah, I love that they just, they have no redemption for him. No. And they act like they're sending him to jail by the end, but then he's still invited to their parties. He attempted to murder them. Uh-huh. Attempted murder. And it's like, that's ah, all right. <laughs> and he's not even going to jail for any of the other stuff he did. Nah, no. he's, he's at the party. So many blatantly illegal things. <laughs> uh, the least of which, not the least of which, is murder. Oh, and like, he also <laughs> somehow like has the bank wrapped around his finger, because when they try to get a loan to keep the ranch afloat, it's like the guy like says it's approved first, so then they go waste money and then come back and he's like, oh, it's not approved, what? Ah! Uh, then he's like, uh, uh, once he leaves, Bart comes out, da, 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 don't have a cow, man. <laughs> <laughs> Eat my shorts, kids. <laughs> So they go looking for this treasure, and then of course it turns out that they found some fool's gold. Mm. But it was the journey and not the destination that was the fun part. And that ends up saving the ranch, much to Bart's uh, disapproval. What a load. What a load. No one would be happy with finding pirate. They would be- ah! <laughs> Especially someone who's going to sell his grandmother for a dollar. Uh -huh. Um, but then, since things are going so wrong for Bart and, uh, and Cookie, who, by the way, okay, I skipped over this part. They tie Bart up by his ankle, they string him up, and then leave him there so that yeah. he won't have any more All sabotages. All the blood will rush to his head and he won't be able to breathe properly, whatever. So that was dumb. <laughs> uh, so that happens, Cookie rescues him, they come in a raft, and they're like, oh no, everything's gone wrong. 
So Bart just decides to kidnap the girls and take them on rapids, and somehow this is gonna get him Gafuli land. Nah. So kidnap girls, attempt to murder equals profit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all okay in the end, as long as he gets a spanking. Yeah, I, I love that he, like, kicks Cookie over when yeah. he decides to leave. Like, he's, like, done with you. Yeah, betrayed <laughs> I did <anything> Cookie. <laughs> I've done nothing but help you. <laughs> Die, Cookie. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> don't try very hard to get away. They're like, Dad, 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 as they put yeah. their, their vests on. Yeah, luckily <laughs> Bart was traveling with child size life vests and helmets. <laughs> Inexplicably, he has those with him. Why wouldn't he? <laughs> and he's like, ha we're on the rapids. No one under this age has survived on these on the Widowmaker. <laughs> <laughs> And then he, all of a sudden he's like, oh no, we're on the wrong path, we're going toward the dam! In a voiceover, like, they're like, I don't know, what do we do? We need to amp this up a little bit. Ah, threat of death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then he dies. Yeah, he dies. He falls <laughs> off, they grab onto the bridge, he falls off and dies. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> they have his corpse at the party. <laughs> I guess that was the end of him. If he'd made it with them, they would have been like, man, he made it to the end of the rapids. I guess we gotta give you the deed now. <laughs> I don't know what the end goal was here, man. But then you see it's over. him go over the rapids and you see him watching from the bushes. He's like, hey, it was all a part of my plan. What? what? <laughs> he had a twin all along. There was a good twin and an evil yeah. twin. You see Kapuli land built to the end. What was that? What, <laughs> what was this movie? <laughs> Their last lines are really fake and bratty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of bad. <laughs> I love the West. Uh huh. The West is sure fun. And then it like it shows them sitting there watching a sunset, and then goes up, and then it cuts right back to that shot. Yeah. Like you forgot it. <laughs> Credits. Oh yeah. <laughs> It is the, that happened. Remember these good memories from two seconds ago? <laughs> I think if you're gonna watch any of the Olsen movies, Olsen twin movies, I think I would recommend this one the most. Because it has the most fun in it that you could watch it now. And they're not they're not really annoying in it. It's stupid, but I don't find them annoying. I feel like some of the humor still holds up, some of it unintentionally, so. Yeah. It has the most ridiculous Martin Mole in it, so. Yeah, Martin Mole is hilarious. <laughs> Just for that alone, I recommend it. Him trying to kill these little girls. Yeah. It's ridiculous lair and everything. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you guys need to find out how the West was fun. Check it out, guys. <laughs>